Greetings, citizens of the digital world. It is I, the serial killer, coming to you today on day 118 of the year of vlogging dangerously. And no, my, oh, my, movie May is looming on the horizon, just a few days away, and I've been buying more movies, because I can, and I'm an idiot, and I pay money for movies that are stupid, and some that are good. I've repurchased a copy of several of the movies that I will be watching for Movie Man. I tell you one thing. Some of them I'm torturing myself because they're horrible. Some of them I'm torturing myself because they're so damn long, despite being awesome. Anyway, that's not what I'm here to talk about today. No, today I'm going to talk about hail and well-met good friends. It turns out that beer and whiskey and popcorn and bacon are all good for your health. Oh, yes, they are. Studies, not the same study, because that would be the coolest study ever. It's like, oh, I'm going to eat a bunch of bacon and uh, drink some whiskey and a little bit of beer with that. And, you know, then eat some popcorn and watch a movie. And that's going to be science. No, that's not the science on its own. No, the science was done in four separate doses. And let's see what they, the breakdown of it was. Beer helps your brain. See, people doing trivia, and yeah, no, not trivia necessarily, because everybody knows pub trivia, right? It turns out pub trivia, there's a reason why people can be incredibly good at it, though, because it, it turns out one or two pints of beer sharpen the brain. So a person who's had one or two pints of beer is actually going to respond better than someone with no beer in their system. Now, I can see this as being this study as being a, a very bad thing, though. Because, yes, it's good for problem solving, but don't ever rationalize that as being good for driving. Or, god damn, it's not. But, if you have to do a test, a couple beers in you is good. So all you university students who like your breakfast beers, you're doing it right. Bacon and pork fat in general, as well as whiskey, are both supposed to be good for promoting good cholesterol. Now, there is such a thing as good fats and cholesterols. Of course, people in the savvy know, know it. They, um, they are supposed to be, they, they lower the bad cholesterol and bring in the good. And, uh, what's popcorn was the one that's, it's high in fiber, and also, apparently, it's got antioxidants, which, you know, that's the buzzword about health, too, right? But my big thing is that, apparently, the woman who did the whiskey study... No, not the woman who did the whiskey study. The woman who did the pork fat study. She has a book called Fat, an Appreciation of a Misunderstood Ingredient. That's not... It's not only got, you know, a little bit of the science, okay, but it's got recipes that are higher in fat. And apparently... Uh, diets low in fat turn out, that, as it turns out, leave people hungry, depressed, and prone to weight gain. So maybe that low-fat diet you're thinking about doing ain't good for you after all. Maybe my fat diet, perfectly fine if I exercise more. This is glorious. But at the same time, there is another thing that was linked from that same one, and it's an, it's basically a news report lamenting the fact that Americans are being denied their access to Pizza Hut's monstrosity pizzas that come with cheeseburgers, hot dogs, and fried chicken in the crust. Apparently the hot dog one is pretty universal to everywhere else in the world but Canada and America. Who knew? And the fried chicken and the cheeseburgers, you can only get them in the Middle East. <laughs> oh. Thank you. Thank you, Pizza Hut, for not bringing that shit here. Because I'd probably try it, and I would die. The Double Down was bad enough, my God. The double down was bad enough. But anyway, with health news over, I have been, as usual, the serial killer. Questions, comments, concerns, death threats, you know where to put them. Put them in the comment section below. And I will see you.